The Spiro River enters the sea south of Point Hibbs on the west coast. Victor Nielsen and sons Oscar, Horace and Roy commenced a pining operation there in 1929. Firstly, access was by walking track from Birch's Inlet. Yes, for that, the Spiro venture uh, was something different. Uh, the Spiro River is on the west coast of Tasmania, near Point Hibbs, very rough. It's about uh, 16 miles from the tip of Birch's Inlet which runs off Macquarie Harbour. Uh, this is how you get to it overland. You go up as far as you can up Birch's Inlet up a, and then up a little creek, creek and then it's uh, button grass for about four or five miles, four miles and then you hit the uh, it's hardly a rainforest, it, but could be in places. And then you get the Spiro River, you get the Spiro River about halfway up from the source of it. Now, it was fairly well known that there was lovely stands of yew and pine in the Spiro River, but it was inaccessible through Macquarie Harbour. So it had to be got out on the Southern Ocean, which is a very rough ocean. And of course it 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 it, it was something to do with boats and this is what my old father really lapped up, anything to do with a boat. They'd heard of these people in New Zealand, these millers that was in the cowrie pine business, towing their logs. What they call towing is you pull behind your boat a wire which you get fastened to your logs. Instead of dragging these logs through the water side by side like they did in the Macquarie Harbour from the Gordon River, they pulled these logs end on end two abreast along a, a long wire rope and they in New Zealand they seemed to be able to do it through rough seas. Well this was the, the idea of the Spiro venture. So they was getting a bit short of funds and my old father offered to fund himself until it got going. Well, this meant cutting a, a walking track from Birch's Inlet into the middle of the Spiro River. We hadn't then got a boat s suitable to go around the rough uh, seas. So we had to go across from Birch's Inlet and everything was on our backs again here, packing. It was a longer track than what the sprint was. Uphill and a very rough track too, uphill down dale. Well we packed everything through into the Spiro River. That was my father's part. We built a tent, got blown out of it. We built a hut out of split paling and got more consolidated there. Well, our job was cutting the, the timber out of the Spiro River so as you could put your logs into the river and they'd float down to the mouth. Almost totally obscured by fallen timber, this is the mouth of a creek entering the Gordon River. In creeks and rivers like these, a tremendous amount of work was required to remove the debris before hewn pine logs could be floated down them. This was termed cutting out 
the river or creek. Nielsen's spent a year cutting out four miles of the Spiro River. Well, this is what we, the Nielsen's, was doing. Now, the other part was more or less left to George Smith. Earlier to his partner, Edgerton, I think later on Edgerton went out of it for some reason or other. Whether it was bankruptcy or not, I don't know. But it was then left to George Smith and my father. Well, the, the thing of getting the timber from the mouth of the Spiro River to Strawn was always very high, I call it hypothetical, I don't know what the name would be. To us three boys it was never seemed to be going as good as it should be. There was a tug in Strawn at the time called the Maitlands, well not a very good tug, Bricky Grinan, the miller, owned it. There was supposed to be consultation between him and George Smith about the towing of the logs from the Spiro River to surround to Strawn. But Bricky Grinan never seemed to ever know anything about it. But of course my old father, he was in his element with just putting logs into the Spiro River regardless of how you was going to get them out. It was all just more or less a dream. Of course, he'd got us three boys. We'd gone to Melbourne to, to get work, and we worked over there for a short time. And, of course, we was glad to get out of Melbourne, getting back into the pine under any circumstances. And, of course, we were lapping it up because we were glad to be back into pining. But of course the future, we was working on our father's money. And uh, eventually, I forget how it come about, I eventually built this boat, the Why Worry. And it eventually got uh, a 35 horsepower kerosene motor into it. And I think by this time we'd come around to the Sprint and was working there, but the old father was still heaven bent on proving that logs could be towed up from the Spiro River. And eventually he did go down and tow up some rivers, uh, some logs from the Spiro River in this boat. Him and his old, my oldest brother. Well, that started it off. And then there was a syndicate formed by the local butcher, Hayes, and the baker, Marsden. A syndicate of three. They put money into a venture. My father's share was the, the work we had done at the Spiro River and the logs that was already in it. So they formed a three-part partnership. By this time I'd got sick of it and I'd left my interest there. Well, then they bought a steamship called the Gundia, a very solid vessel that was down the Huon that used to cart apples around into Hobart from a very solid, built, built of blue gum, but had not much power, seven knots at the best, a steam engine, uh, wood-fired boiler, well, they carried on with this Gundia for a while. And uh, I think they did bring loads up from the Spiro.
Bureau there. They eventually took horses down. And of course, this was later on when I wasn't, I was working then in Mount Lyle, I think. And from there, it had a bit of a history, which you know, <laughs> might know more about it than I do. <laughs> when they introduced horses there eventually. But there was quite a lot of timber come up from the Spiro River. Howard, the sawmiller, he got mixed up in it because I think he was taking the timber, a lot of the timber. Anyhow, that was that venture. If we, I think I mentioned that we used to have to pack our food over this track. Well, I eventually built a boat, uh, 33, 34 foot long, that was capable of going around, but we had to get a mooring, a safe mooring around at Point Hibbs, which was near the Spiro River. Well, the only safe mooring was a little gulch way, I suppose you'd call it, but it didn't have a very big entrance. And there was fairly jagged rocks uh, underneath, but uh, high enough to put a hole in, the, in, the, in your boat with the surge that used to come in. So we there was a one little there was one rock which was the main danger and he was a little bit jagged. But he was only down about well we could stand on uh, we could stand on the sand near him and still have your head out of water, which give it about a six foot draft, which was enough. But we eventually got rid of this jagged rock.